This is the instructional video for the Building a Popsicle Stick Bridge lesson plan. It was created and narrated by Sean Krupa and uses original material from Enwei Feng. This video and accompanying lesson plan are part of Ohio University's Boat of Knowledge in the Science classroom, funded by the National Science Foundation. Over the course of the next few weeks, you're going to be building and testing popsicle stick bridges. But before we go any further, we need a little bit of background. Below is a picture of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, which happens to be my hometown. As of 2014, the city of Pittsburgh has an astounding 446 bridges within its city limits. We are all well aware of the importance and applications that bridges play in our daily lives. So let's try to understand a little bit about bridge design and construction, specifically forces, shapes, and materials. PBS.org's Building Big Interactive Lab does an excellent job of exposing students to forces, loads, shapes, and materials. Therefore, it's recommended that the class pause this video and take some time to explore the interactive lab before going any further. After playing with PBS.org's Building Big Interactive Lab, students should be able to explain tension, compression, strong shapes, and loads. However, for a more thorough introduction, check out Bridge Engineering, another Ohio University books lesson plan. This one was created by Justin Wiseman and Sarah Eldabaha. Now let's look at some common bridge designs. We'll start with beam bridges. The picture below shows the Walter B. Jones Bridge in Hyde County, North Carolina. The pros of beam bridges are that they're easy to build, relatively inexpensive, and versatile. While the cons of beam bridges are that they have a limited span, large ships cannot pass underneath them, and they are thought to have a plain or boring design. Here's a simple diagram of how the forces are distributed on beam bridges. When you look at a diagram like this, you should be asking yourself the following question. Where are the forces the greatest, and by extension, where is the bridge most likely to fail? Now let's look at arch bridges. This is the Roosevelt Lake Bridge in Phoenix, Arizona. The pros of arch bridges are that they have a wide range of materials that they can be built from. They are considered to be attractive and are very strong. However, they're relatively expensive and can only be built in certain places. Again, we see how the forces are distributed for arch bridges. Now let's look at truss bridges. This is the George Street Bridge in Aurora, Indiana. Truss bridges are very strong, so strong in fact that they can be used as draw bridges. However, they are difficult to construct, require high maintenance, and are not considered to be attractive. Here we see how the loads and forces are distributed on a truss bridge. Next, we'll look at suspension bridges. This is the Verrazano Narrows Bridge in New York City, New York. Suspension bridges can span huge distances. They're also thought to be attractive and have the added versatility that ships can travel underneath them. However, suspension bridges are the most expensive type of bridge to build, as they require lots of material and long build times. Here's how the forces are distributed on a suspension bridge. The last type of bridge we'll look at are cable stayed bridges. This is the Verena Enon Bridge in Richmond, Virginia. The pros of cable stayed bridges are that they can span decent sized lengths they're faster to build, and they're thought to be attractive. However, they're the second most expensive type of bridge to build behind only suspension bridges. Lastly, we'll look at how the forces are distributed on a cable stayed bridge. We're now ready to begin the popsicle stick bridge challenge. Your task is to design a bridge that can span a 24 inch gap. Also, your bridge must have a roadbed that is a minimum of 3.5 inches wide. 
Lastly, your bridge must be able to support 150 pounds. Here are some additional constraints. You'll be imposed with a budget. The prices for materials, services, and tools will be outlined in the lesson plan materials. Optionally, your teacher can mandate that you assign yourselves team roles. These roles can be engineers, reporters and accountants, designers, and other various roles. The first step of the activity is to research bridge designs. You should go out and look at local bridges. You can go back and review strong shapes. Finally, you should be reviewing bridge designs. There are a plethora of bridge designs available for you to gather inspiration from. Next, you must submit a formal design before construction can begin. You can do this on graphing paper to scale or in a program like PowerPoint. The third step is the construction step. This will take place over several class periods and your teacher will determine the pace and duration of this stage. Finally, it's time to evaluate your bridges. Your bridges will be evaluated on two main criteria. The first is the budget. What percentage of the budget did you use for your bridge? Next will be efficiency. How much weight could your bridge hold compared with the weight of the bridge itself? These are the two main criteria, however, the teacher may assign more criteria. An overall winner could, for example, be determined by dividing the efficiency by the budget, which would then give you the bridge that held the most amount of weight for the least cost. When it's time to evaluate your bridge, weights will either be added to the top or suspended below the bridge and increased incrementally until the bridge snaps. The last amount of weight that your bridge can hold before snapping is the total weight that your bridge was able to support. Here are some take home points. Bridge design and construction relies on the fundamentals of physics and engineering. All bridge designs have pros and cons. And finally, we did an engineering challenge to test our knowledge of bridge design. This concludes the instructional video. Thanks for your attention.